What's going on guys? Today's a little bit different because as you can tell, we're not in the shop and we're actually in front of the computer. We're also not working on the Samurai or the Toyota today. In fact, we're gonna be working on our CNC plasma cutter. I'm gonna be designing some mounts, some shock mounts or coilover mounts that we're gonna use as some test pieces to try to dial in the settings on our CNC plasma cutter. I'm gonna get going on SolidWorks. So we're gonna be going really from concept to design to cutting to actually having these pieces in real life. When we bought this table, we chose to go with the Razor Weld 45. Yeah, Razor Weld Cut 45 Plasma Cutter. I think it's a pretty close knockoff to Hypertherm 45, and we're actually able to use Hypertherm tips in it. So that's what we're using right now, are these T45B. They're for uh, the Hypertherm, Hypertherm Power Max 45. And then this is a machine torch that's intended for the Razor Weld. So I definitely recommend getting a machine that will let you use the hypertherm tips or at least have a hypertherm machine yourself because uh, the cut quality is just significantly better. So air quality is super important with a plasma cutter. If you have any moisture that comes out of the tip, it's gonna really reduce your cut quality as well as any contaminants in there are just gonna reduce that quality altogether. So the goal is to really have dry and clean air. We're running right now an 11 CFM air compressor so this should give us enough throughput of air to keep up with our cutting duty cycle. And then we also have a really large desiccant air filter. So the air comes in through the bottom and plums all the way through up the top. And this runs directly to our machine. And on the other side with the plasma cutter, we're running a motor guard just before the input of the plasma cutter, just to get rid of any extra moisture or contaminants that make it all the way through. So far, this has been working really well for us and we have no reason to complain. We plugged in the machine, we've got everything fired up, and then we'll, what we'll do is we'll add in the tap file that we generated from the office, and then we'll load that into fire control, do a dry run, and then confirm if that G-code was actually good for what we want. If everything looks good, I've placed a quarter inch sheet right here, and we're ready to get cutting on it, so we can fire it up, run those four different versions, and see which cut quality we like the best. So we opted for the limit switch kit from Langmuir. It just helps to home your, your axis for Y and X. So you can have a little bit more confidence when you're loading a part in, that you're not gonna bind the motors and overrun them at all. Now really the next step is to move the machine to the workpiece zero. So I'm just gonna put it at the top left corner of this plate, and then we can load in our file and start cutting. So let's do that right now. And we're gonna bring in our first tool test piece. So there we go, you can see it dropped it into the section here. And then what we really need to do now is set the program origin. So if you click this, we want the top left because that's where we're, we have our configuration set up on the machine. So with that ready to go, I am going to run and do a dry run. So you hit this enable button here for dry run, then we can run a start. Okay, that looked good to me. What I was looking for was make sure the torch wasn't running off the piece. So I'm pretty confident to be able to run this now and that's our next step. Well guys, I forgot to hit the record button after we cut our first piece. So I'm gonna cue this up for a second run and then we'll get this on camera.
All right, so I think that went pretty well. It looked pretty good while I was cutting. Let's pull this out and take a look. Okay, this is checker plate. So you can see on the back, we got checker plate here. But that is like very minimal dross. I'm quite happy with that. I mean, we have quite a big devil. Let's see how hot this is. It's pretty warm, but. So we do have a bit of a bevel on there, guys, but I mean, it's definitely a usable part and very minimal draw, so no cleanup. So let's cut with these other tools and then we can compare them. So guys, I think the third tool was the one that worked the best. We had very minimal bevel. We had almost zero dross. Anyone that was on there, you could just pick it off with your fingernail. And the only bevel is really on the arc. So if I was super picky, I could slow it down on curvatures, just the tiniest amount. But if all my parts were cut at that quality, I would be more than happy. That little bit of a bevel won't even be noticeable. And most of those pieces are getting welded on the corners anyways. So what I'm going to do now is use the nesting feature in fire control to just cut out a whole bunch more of those tabs on this plate. And then we can get a good look at how it does at longer duty cycles and at a higher throughput. So I'm going to cue that up right now and I'll time lapse this for you. Now I numbered them one through 12. And what I wanted to see was the difference between the first one and the 12th one, because this was all a continuous operation, a continuous job. So this really tests the duty cycle of our compressor as well as the plasma cutter. And looking at these, I mean, I wouldn't really be able to tell you the difference between the two. They're actually quite similar. So this one here is our first cut. So not too bad. Remember this is checker plate. So some of this isn't actually um, like distortion. It's the checkers on the back. Very minimal dross and any dross that is on here, I can pick it off with my fingernail. So hitting this with a wire wheel or a flap disc, it's all just gonna pop off really nice. And then the 12th one, I mean, not a huge change, right? Like see these just pick off. So I mean, that's very minimal cleanup. I will say the corners could use some work also where my lead in was. So this is where the machine started the cut. You can see it has a little bit of distortion there, a little bit of cut from the pierce. And also this bevel or this arc has a bit of a bevel and it's not super smooth, but this is nothing you can't fix with a, a grinder or a flap disc and very minimal effort. I mean, I'm stoked on this. If I'm cutting on my link brackets with these, I would be more than happy with the results of both of these. That's going to be the end of this video, guys. I think we had a really successful day of taking these designs from concept, modeling and in SolidWorks, doing the computer-aided manufacturing and sheet cam, transferring this over to Fusion on the computer in the shop, and then actually cutting the pieces. So it was a pretty exciting day. I cut the most I have on this machine yet, and I got to dial in some of the settings for the quarter inch. Because like I said, everything else has just been with 16 gauge. I'm also going to post the settings in the comments below, or sorry, in the description below. So for any of you guys who do have this machine, I'll post the settings of my final results of what I went with. And hopefully that helps you out if you're trying to cut quarter inch mild steel. Well guys, this is a bit of a change from our regular content. I got a samurai sitting right beside me here. So if you haven't seen that, be sure to head over to our channel. I'm building a, a Suzuki Samurai, doing a four link in the rear and a three link in the front, 
China Jam in 37 inch tires. Nigel is also doing a Toyota D TDI swap. He's got two videos out so far. And this plasma table is helping to fuel both of those builds. So thanks for tuning in. Show us some love with a subscribe, a comment, or a like, and we'll see you next time.